When I tested these speakers, the mid-range driver had some diffraction, and I talked about that in my video about these drivers, and it's because it's relatively equidistant from each of these sides. So I had a lot of commenters, and I think I'm, I myself might have said it in the video, that some edge treatment might help, a roundover or a chamfer or something like that. So today we're gonna do two things. We're gonna measure the mid with the diffraction, all in this setup. It's not the best setup, but it's gonna be captured on this measurement microphone. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all the drivers out and the crossover, excuse me, and I'm gonna chamfer or round over these edges, put it all back together, measure again, look at the measurements together and see, did it make a difference? Um, and how much of a difference? Should we care in the future or should we go with a square edge baffle if we like the look of it? So. Let's get started and see what we can come up with. Okay, off camera, I took a measurement in the garage like I was showing you there in the intro. And right off the bat, there's a lot of similarity to my old measurements. So things are working. You can see the diffraction happening around 2000 hertz. There's a big dip there. But look at my outdoor measurement from before. Look how much smoother it is. Now the scales are different, so it looks a little bit compressed and things like that but much smoother because I don't have those reflections. Even though I've windowed or gated this uh, measurement in the garage, the outdoor measurements are still a lot cleaner. So let that be a little takeaway from this video, if nothing else. But looking at this measurement, we do have some messy reflections and stuff, but just try to ignore those. The diffraction that I want to concentrate on is, you know, around 1800 hertz, 2700 hertz, 3200 hertz, thereabouts. Uh, these little peaks and dips, are kind of our primary concern in this video and I want to get rid of those hopefully with this roundover that I'm about to apply. If you ever wonder why we don't just know the answer to these questions really easily sometimes, we know conceptually roundovers work but this is the level of effort I have to go through. I gotta kind of ruin my test box because I was gonna maybe laminate these things and now I can't. Gotta remove all the drivers, put them all back and try to keep the conditions as identical as possible. I can't keep them perfectly identical, but anyways, this is the result we get. Please note that I didn't do the top of the baffle because of the tweeter and going any further on the woofer won't make a difference and the woofer was in the way. So here's the after measurement. So far, not looking really much different. Here's an overlay. Um, they're not looking much different to me. I don't know what else to say. Uh, there are some changes especially below a thousand hertz more than anywhere and this is because i probably didn't get the speaker in the exact same spot as before so the reflections you know especially in that wavelength of however far i had the speaker off the floor the reflections moved a little bit so ignore that the main area of concern is above 1500 hertz and there's virtually no difference here um, maybe it did something but not really <laughs> So I took some off-axis measurements because I thought, well, did it do anything? Um, how bad is it? What, you know, what else can we gather from this? At 20 degrees off-axis, the diffraction smooths right out. And then 40 and 60, everything just kind of falls in place from there. I should have, it's unfortunate, I should have taken a 5 and a 10 degree off-axis measurement, I guess. But I, I didn't, and then I took it all apart and went, oh, I should have done that. But you can see moving off axis does make a difference. It smooths out diffraction, basically the same effect as offsetting the mid. Well, that didn't exactly go as planned. I really thought the roundover would do something to correct diffraction, but for this specific scenario, it kind of did absolutely nothing. And I don't think it'll be audible at all. So why exactly did that happen? Well, I think it has to do with wavelength. Normally when we're talking about roundovers for diffraction, especially three quarter inch roundovers like this one, we're usually talking about a tweeter that's playing from say 3000 hertz and up. I was trying to correct a problem between 1500 hertz and 3000 hertz. And I think those wavelengths are a little on the long side to be affected by this relatively small roundover. Had it been a couple inches, I think it would have done more work. So. I think that's really what it boils down to. 
perhaps offsetting this mid would have actually done better because you would have had unequal distances between the edges of the baffle and the driver. But I still don't like that for other reasons that I'm not going to cover in this video. But let's just say I'd rather, um, I'd rather have a uniform off-axis response than an offset mid because I'm usually never listening exactly on, ox on axis, especially in a home theater room where there's multiple seats and stuff like that. So you, we saw in the measurements, as soon as you go off axis, uh, the diffraction clears up. So I think that's why I don't hear it. I think that's why it's totally fine and it doesn't bother me. And overall, I think the lesson learned is even though it looks big on the frequency response, it's not that big of a deal actually. And this is why we need to take off axis measurements as well and really evaluate what the entire story is. So thanks for watching me come to a non-conclusion conclusion. Kind of upsetting, but also useful because we learned something, or at least I did. Um, well, something I already knew, but I just kind of gaffed on it, I guess. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.